been quite a few years since these launched. The 120 millimeter T30 is still an S tier fan. It's been more than four years since I reviewed those and these guys are finally dropping. This is 140 millimeter T30. And we're gonna see if this is the best 140 millimeter fan that you can get right now. Welcome to Machines and More, back from CES. A little under the weather, so apologies in advance if any of the audio is uh, hard to pick up on, and I'll try my best today. Uh, so today's is a fan review. It's one of the most important vital components in a build. This is the Fantex T30 140 millimeter version. It's the bigger, batter T30, which itself is in that thicker PC fan category at 30 millimeters thick. Before I begin, I did want to let you know that Fantex provided the necessary fan samples ahead of this launch big thanks to them, but this is not a paid review. I don't compromise on independent and scientific testing and you won't see paid reviews on this channel. So do me a favor, click that subscribe button if you are new here and uh, welcome. So many of you are familiar with the excellent 120 millimeter version. So like it's 120 millimeter counterpart, the T30 140 is constructed out of liquid crystal polymer. The frame and the blades, they look a lot alike. It's a darker gray LCP frame. The blades are a lighter gray. Uh, this is a great material and very durable. The difference is that center hub 120 millimeter has a brass dot. This one's got silver. Because of the high-end manufacturing spec, they're going with a 0.8 millimeter tip clearance between the blade tip and the frame. The T3140 has a switch on the back of the hub and that toggles between three maximum RPM modes. You got 1200, 2000 or 2500 out of the box is set up to top out at that medium setting or 2000 rpm and that will be fine for most applications but you do get to choose here how granular you want your fan curves and settings to be in, in your motherboard curves or set a limit uh, hard limit here three-phase motor and they're using a maglev bearing system from sunon called the dual vapo that was also used on the 120 millimeter uh, that's quiet and as I recall doesn't need lubricating oil. I haven't had any issues with any of the T3120s I've tested as far as the bearing and blades go. Uh, they all carry a six-year warranty. Uh, the fans come with a four pin cable that is 15 centimeters long. You can further extend the reach with an ex uh, included extension cable uh, and these cables are daisy chainable, meaning that you can connect one fan to another down the chain requiring only the first one to be connected to the board or your fan controller and that eliminates the need for extra splitters. The max current is 0.37 amps, so you will be able to connect quite a few of these before running into trouble with most uh, modern board headers that tend to be at least two amps, uh, but definitely do the math and check the board you go with first before plugging in a whole bunch of these. So one thing I will note, I've had issues with the fan wires pulling out of the 120 millimeter version close to the frame here on this connector and that's because it splits off very close to the frame and that kind of acts as a as a leverage point so just be aware and careful when you take this one off or move it around or you know before it's disconnected so uh, another thing very important screws because with these thicker fans you will need longer rad screws than commonly are supplied with radiators or aios so Fantex supplies both 632 and M4 screws like you'll need with some radiators. And that's very nice as that will cover the majority of radiators out there. Regular fan screws will also work on these fine if you're attaching to a case uh, and they supply those as well. So those are the details. It's a quality made fan. It feels like you just paid for some serious gear. And overall, uh, I think you'll be impressed with the quality of the T30 140, just like the T30 120s. To test and see if this is, in fact, the best 140 millimeter fan I am comparing against three other high-end models, uh, the regular thickness Noctua A14 G2 and the recently N uh, released NZXT F280X, which is a single frame 280 millimeter unit and also in that thicker 30 millimeter category, and also your regular thickness Be Quiet Silent Wings 4 Pro. And all testing here is noise normalized, meaning that the measured sound level is identical in each grouping that I show you, except for the maximum RPM test. For this test, I have a 280 millimeter AIO, and by the way, the top mounting in an NK73, absolutely possible. So if you are curious, it can absolutely be done with an ITX board and a two and a half slot card. I would opt for the taller uh, foot option at the bottom though. 
So here we have an average thickness 280 millimeter rad combined with a Ryzen 9 9950X loaded to 200 watts. I think many users will be looking to use uh, these on a rad like this, either on an AIO or a custom loop. So this should give us a good general comparison where the performance stands between these fans. So let's start at the barely audible noise critical level here. The T30 is at 890 RPM here. The coolant temp comes in at 30.6 degrees versus a 20 degree ambient, so it's not bad. But the fan best suited to this application at this noise optimized level is the Noctua A14 G2. Uh, one thing I've noticed in the past with the Silent Wings 4 is both the 120 and the 140 millimeter versions struggle at low RPMs, as is the case here. But it will usually catch up. Applicable use cases for this level will be multiple 280s or a 420 or a system where you don't mind higher operating component temps, but you prioritize basically an inaudible system. For that purpose, I think the Noctua is the best performer. Past this point though, that's where you'll see this T30 dominate. Plus 1.2 dBA, the T30 makes a huge improvement. At 1265 RPM, it steps past the Noctua and it is clearly ahead now. The F280X is also following closely along. This interval and the next noise interval is your more bread and butter, you know, single 280 rad uh, type of RPM level, depending on what you're cooling. Plus 5.6, T30 at 1600 RPM is ahead of the Nocta G2s. And uh, at our max for the out of the box performance setting, which is at 2000 RPM, the T30 is still, still the best here. G2 drops out because it does not go this fast, but it does top the other ones as well. Typically for a properly designed liquid cooled system, you should not be going this fast on a 140 millimeter fan, but it goes this fast. So that's why we're testing it here. Uh, we're not done yet though, because the absolute max is actually 2,500 RPM, uh, give or take. At this level, plus 14 dBA. So if you want to dry your hair or your clothes while you game, this is going to move the most air through for sure. So I've got these set up on a rad to give you some sound samples. Take a quick listen and then I'll wrap this one up for you. Overall, no real noise concerns here. You might notice the pitch difference at the equal noise interval versus the Noctos, but at lower noise levels, it may not be much of a concern. So the question I had when I set out to test these was, is this the best 140 millimeter fan? And after testing these thoroughly and comparing against the other ones, absolutely speaking, no. Um, it is easily the best at moderate and above RPMs, but for me, the Noctua's are still the best at the low RPM level. And that's an important consideration for custom loop builders. And we do also consider that those are regular thickness fans. So whether that means you can, you know, fit things more flexibly or run a thicker radiator, that also needs to be taken into account, right? But that being said, the T30 is for most users looking to up their 280 game. It's going to be the go-to recommendation as long as you have clearance for it. And it is an excellent all-around fan that also has a super high RPM mode for those niche use cases. Uh, the NZXT F280X also performing very highly uh, with also you know having those higher RPM benefits. But pricing is another consideration, right? So pricing is probably where the T30 basically wins. Uh, the Fantex pricing strategy here has the single at an MSRP of 40 US, which is very interesting considering that's exactly the same as the 120 millimeter one right now. And they're also doing a triple pack of these for 115 US, which makes each one 38 or so. And the weird thing about the three pack for 140 though, versus three pack for 120 is that although a lot of folks have 360s, or even if I have a 240, I can use the extra one as a case fan. There's just not too many 420s. And if you have the odd one out, your case may not take a 140, right? And the 30 millimeters may also be an inconvenient case fan size. Uh, so depending on your you know, chassis. So let's keep that in mind. 
Uh, that being said, this is a better price point than both the Noctua and NZXT, so that makes it an easy recommendation and thumbs up all around. So that'll wrap this one up for now uh, for the initial review. Make sure you give a like here, subscribe if you haven't already. Links will be down below and available, and a big thanks for watching.